Okay, everybody. In the previous um, clip of this video protocol, we began this process of calculating e distances, and I walked you through essentially down to right here. Um, so essentially, what we had done was to attach environmental values and g distances to 5,000 random points from across our region. We pasted that table into Excel. And so now we're going to work through this next section. Um, and it, of course, our endpoint is a map of environmental distances. Um, so just to remind you, we were in QGIS. We took this table and we moved it over to Excel and pasted it. So we can get rid of this first column, and we're left with the ID of the um, each point in the the random point shape file, temperature, precipitation, and geographic distance. And you see we have some zero geographic distance values in here, and um, those are points falling in well-known areas. So that's the, the crucial set of reference points that allow us to uh, calculate e-distances. So I'm going to sort this so that all of those zero distances are at the end. And that'll just make our lives a little more convenient in a moment. So I'm going to copy this and move it over to another sheet. And if you remember, we need minimum, maximum, and range. And so I'm going to calculate the minimum. I'm going to calculate the maximum. And then, you know, that range equals maximum minus minimum. We can copy that over to here for precipitation. Now you also need to remember that we need to standardize, and we were standardizing by um, the range of temperature and precipitation values. So I'm just going to create these new uh, variables, which will be the observed temperature minus the minimum and that quantity divided by the range. And so what are we doing with this? We're saying how far above the minimum value mi relative to the range. And I can do the exact same thing to precipitation. I can copy those and propagate all the way down. Now I've clearly got some problems with my propagation because I need to fix this and this row. Now watch, all of those missing values will disappear. And we can even test and make sure that we got our um, formula right, because the minimum values relative to the range should give us zeros. They do. And the maximum values relative to the range should give us ones. They do. So we did our formula right, okay? Essentially, notice what I did just now was I took these formulas and I put them up here, which applied them to the minimum and maximum values. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need these standardized temperature and precipitation values for the points with zero G distances, which is to say for the the reference points that have uh, zero distance to a well-known area. 
which is all of these points right here. So I'm going to take those and I'm going to paste them. And you will remember that I'm pasting them transposed so I create a distance matrix. So transpose, and I want just the values, not the formulas. So now you have to remember that this column is going here. So this is temp2 there. And precipitation is both in column F and in row 5. <clears throat> Temperature is in column E and row 4. So now, just to make it clear, I'm going to color these different colors just so we don't get confused, although we may anyway. And now, just to remind you, in orange are all 5,000 points, and in yellow are the 600 or so that have that are falling within well-known um, areas. So now all I need to do is to develop my distance formula and that will be temperature minus temperature quantity squared plus precipitation minus precipitation quantity squared and then that sum of the two uh, squared differences, I raise that to the half power. You'll remember that Arturo insisted on doing that with a square root function. Should be the same thing. And so I get my first distance. That's good, but if I propagate that, these squares will shift around. And what I need is for the E column always to be in the E column and the F column always to be in the F column. Those are those two. And then for these ones that are in the G column, I need those always to be taken from row 4 and row 5. So now my formula should propagate well. And let's make sure just by copying it out this far, and you see the formula is referring to those two and those two, which is exactly what I want. Oops. Okay, so now I'm going to take this all the way out, 600 columns, all the way out to here, and I'm going to take I'm going to take that long set of values and propagate it all the way down. That's going to take a while. So where are we? We now should have a distance matrix that gives us, there it is, that gives us for every, look in column F, for every point in our 5,000 random point data set, the distance to each of about 600 points that fall in well-known areas. Now remember what we're interested in is the nearest neighbor. So it would be the shortest of all of these distances, all 659 distances for this point. And similarly for this point, the minimum of all of those distances. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to create out here, I'm going to call it edist, because that's what it is. It is the minimum of this set of values, all 659 of our distances to well-known points. Okay? And I'm going to propagate that down across all 5,000. Um, and notice that 
these last 659 have zero e distances, and that's because those last 659 are well-known cells. Um, but we're going to fix that regardless. So now, I think the easiest thing to do is to copy this whole thing and set up a new table where I'm just going to paste values. Yep. Sorry. These things take a little while when it is a 5,000 by 650 table. Looks like it's ready. And be patient, be patient, be patient, and all of a sudden it will appear. So again, what we've done is we have standardized our, our precipitation and temperature values to the range. And then we have calculated minimum E distances from every point in our data set to every well-known point in our data set. So now I'm going to just get rid of some of this stuff here. And I'll produce our final table in just a moment. I better save this. Oops, you can already see I made a mistake. I didn't I didn't um, paste as values. So that's why that um, misbehaved on me. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to end this video segment, and I'll be back having fixed that problem.